You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Aloha from Honolulu. This is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Uh, it's a windy and a bit uh, a bit cooler here in Hawaii in Honolulu this morning. Uh, winter is here. <laughs> You'll laugh at uh, the balmy degrees winter happened to be here. So today in astrology, the sun is in Scorpio for this month with birthday Scorpios. And today the moon is in Cancer. So it spotlights Cancer individuals today before it goes into Leo tomorrow with a spotlight of having been two and a half days each month in each sign. Mercury is in Sagittarius. So Sagittarius people are getting a lot of communicating, phone calls, contracts, possible, and uh, just a lot of activity. Could be uh, short distance travels, um, things like that happening. Travels, computers, Uh, all kinds of Mercury-type activities. Uh, Venus just entered Scorpio for this month transit. Now, Venus is in each sign for one month uh, of each year. So this is the, uh, it is two degrees now. It will travel for to the 30 degrees of the sign of Scorpio. And then it will move on to the next sign, taking a full year to go in each sign of the zodiac. Mars is in Libra, and it has started a new two-year cycle of activity for Libra. Jupiter in Scorpio is the start of a new 12-year expansive cycle. Scorpios have finished up a 12-year cycle and are starting a new one. Saturn is finishing up in Sagittarius until about the 19th of December. Uh, It has been there in Sagittarius, teaching them lessons, (laughs) slowing them down. Um, It's a serious uh, planet, a teaching planet, and uh, it's been totally different for Sagittarius people because they have the Jupiter uh, ruling planet of optimism and enthusiasm and uh, opportunities and 
things have been a bit slower for over two and a half years. They've become more serious, but that may change right away. So then uh, it goes into Capricorn for uh, a sobering, and it is the ruler of Capricorn. So it could bring Capricorns more status, especially the a uh, little bit older Capricorns. Any uh, older? I mean, over 28. Um, okay, Pluto is in Capricorn right now. That's what's unearthing the scandals, making changes in the, in governments, just uh, unearthing sh- things, uh, shaking things up so that new things can appear. Changes must be made, and uh, the upheaval uh, is the start of that change situation. Now, Neptune will retrograde November 22nd. Neptune is a planet of idealism, confusion, theater, uh, and will look at Neptune a little bit longer here. Uh, There's an article by Nancy Frederick, and it's Neptune in Pisces. Now, Neptune has been in Pisces for a little bit, and it's the natural uh, sign for it to be in. Uh, So Neptune is the planet of illusion, delusion, and spirituality, Nancy says. We live in a world defined by Saturn, a world of structure and foundations, a world of time and of achievement over time. As physical beings incarnated in bodies, this world makes sense to us. Saturn provides the rules by which we live. As you sow, so shall you reap. Neptune, however, follows none of these rules. And it is Neptune's job to break them down. For there is another reality beyond Saturn, and it is that reality which belongs to Neptune. Uh, they, there are, uh, it, uh, in this sense of different reality, one of the basic tenets of life on Earth in our Saturn defined world of structure is the idea of beginning middle and end. Within all things is movement towards something. In a Neptune reality, we just are. Uh, And we're not saying that once uh, you're gone or dead or make a transition, uh, we are saying that it is, uh, there is an afterlife and it is infinite. For there is a sense of slow movement out of individual limits that define who you are, not physically, but as a personality, a life, a collection of life experiences, summed up within this life as part of a persona that is you, and beyond even that is a reservoir of the sum total of life experiences that you have been immersed in through other lifetimes as well. And ultimately, it is like a pool of energy which you have sprung and back to which you will go. At that point, your individuality floats and merges together in the pool with that of other life forms to which you have connection. You will be like a glob of sherbet melting into a puddle of a giant punch bowl and merging into the punch. That's Neptune. And it's more of an ultimate reality than what we understand here on Earth, where everything is so obvious, concrete, and clear-cut. It seems that the greatest of Neptune's blessings is the stimulation to consider ideas such as those to think about the meaning of life and of other realms, where there is more pleasure than to sit and let ideas wash over your mind until there is some sense of meaning 
even if it can never be clearly articulated. What do you believe? Neptune is very good at asking this question, and it is a blessing to be allowed to sit and contemplate the answers. Now, any time you ask the universe a question, you will get all kinds of answers. So what is really happening? There is another question posed by Neptune, but often the answer is more confusing than the question. When you're thinking about something deep and complicated, or even just hard, like multiplying double-digit numbers in your head, what do you do? Like most people, you probably close your eyes. Sometimes it's easier to see without our eyes, see with our inner eyes. And that, too, is a point Neptune makes. If you channel, as this author does, you close your eyes and hear the voices or see the images you would not hear or see with them open. For with those closed eyes, your mind's eye opens to a new vista, one defined by Neptune. Of course, those Neptunian vistas sometimes confuse us, and sometimes we interpret them incorrectly. That's the whole point of Neptune, to break down what is solid and understood so that it is something, something more ephemeral and can be intuited. Neptune is about ideals, what life should be, could be, might be. If only it could be imagined, and with Neptune, we can imagine it. Who hasn't had the experience of falling in love with someone so special, so amazing, so truly perfect, that it's a fibrillating delight just to be in this person's presence? Our heart goes pitter-patter, our brain goes to sleep, Inevitably, some, something crashes and the relationship crashes with it. When we stop and think about it all, what just happened? We'll say, how could I have been so foolish? And sometimes that's true. Sometimes the lover is a creep, but sometimes it's more complicated. We see some rainbows inside a person and then it gets all sludgy and we see the bad stuff. Does that mean the rainbows were just an illusion or just does it mean that we saw something special in a person who was also not quite perfect? Welcome to Neptunian romance. It's like finding a diamond in a dumpster. You have a treasure, but you still emerge covered with junk. After such a romance, heartbreak ensues, and we mourn the death of our illusions, our ideals. Maybe nothing will ever come along that lives up to what we thought we had, but really the thing to do is to rejoice. For even if it didn't last, we touched upon it. We had something beyond the norm. We had a glimpse of a love, love that was more magical, more in keeping with what our true heart desires. So with each heartbreak, the right approach is to say, Oh, I see, this is what love can be. And then to hold in your mind the idea of that perfection. Some people do that, and some get hurt again and again. But it seems to me that with the vision of true love, it's more possible to find one that does fulfill the Neptunian ideal more closely. And, it, and they seem to evolve better and better. And we recognize it when the real thing comes along. And if even if the real thing never comes along during the current lifetime, there is a resonance in our hearts of that sensation of pure and abiding, all-encompassing love, that genuine merging with a soulmate who is true love. And that is a blessing. Taking it as such is what Neptune would want. Now we are going to pause. This is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio about Neptune. We'll be right back. 
animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. This is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and we're talking about Neptune. Do you meditate or do creative visualizations? Meditation is a process of hyper focus leading to peacefulness. It uses the mind to free the mind. It harnesses the mind's ability to concentrate, to free itself from the tick-tock of constant thoughts so that more can flow into the consciousness. Creative visualization can be a tool for healing as it puts a more positive scenario in your mind that feels so real it ultimately can become a blueprint for a new, better, and more desired reality. This is one way in which we can take the leap into a new reality via Neptune. The great thing about meditation is it can open up a new vista for the mind and provide a way to release the mind's boundaries, allowing you to merge with something greater than yourself. If you could let go, such as in sleep, and float out of your body, which we all do now and then, and merge with your spirit guides or the infinite, you would be in a very nice place, a place that feels comforting for you. And you have merged with all that is and ultimately God. Of course, we are all part of all that is. By its very definition, all that is includes us all. And thus we are part of God. But through meditation, we can palpably feel that sensation. It's like floating on something that supports us. It's like merging with a deep and comforting greater presence. And yet it can, and yes, it can be very intoxicating. People cite the same results via psychotropic drugs. And maybe that's why they are addictive. It's far better, though, to make that quantum leap through meditation. It's Neptune that parts that veil, that opens that curtain allowing us to see beyond the four walls of life as we know it. And what we see is more about what we sense. For a Neptunian vision is often more sensation than sight. Neptune's role is to deny the ego. For if you are to merge with all that is, and you have to let you do have to let go, and in letting go, you lose those boundaries. You lose some of yourself, and you can gain more of yourself. It can feel wonderful, but the flip side is when Neptune transits the planet, 
in which ego is significant, such as the sun or Mars. Then it doesn't always feel so wonderful because you begin to doubt the things that define you, the things that have so far comprised your individuality. You don't feel like a go, 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 do, do, do person during a hard aspect from Neptune. You feel a bit tired and a bit wishy-washy. It's time to kind of just be. You don't want to be in the rat race. You just want to be. And it can make you feel different. There's a very significant lesson to be learned from such a Neptune transit. Yes, take pleasure in your accomplishments. Work hard. Do your best. Be proud of your triumphs. But don't make them so very important. There is more to you than what you just accomplished. There is a spark inside you, a tiny flame of pure being. And with Neptune, it's time to nurture that. Except the way to do that isn't to focus on it. There's a line in a, ro in a romantic poem that says, I am through you, so I. That is a poem about how a lover helps us become our own best self. But that idea applies, too, to Neptune and the connection it fosters with the great beyond. By letting go of the boundaries of yourself, you become more, not less. Of course, it may not feel like that when Neptune is opposing your sun, when you're not feeling really perky and wish you could just nap. Do you have faith? It is faith that allows us to believe that what we can't be sure we know. It is faith that allows us to believe something that seems untrue, but which we know is actually true. This author always says, I don't let the facts get in the way of the truth. Even if you can't sense the presence of your spirit guides, you may believe they're there. Nobody walks into a place and sees God sitting on a throne, but most people believe God exists. If you encounter an atheist, usually that person is scientifically oriented, believing only in hard facts. It's all brain, no sensation. There are plenty of scientists who are both brain and intuition, and they're usually the best in their field, for they have the faith to envision something as yet unproven, and the intellect to find a way to make it more concrete. It's Neptune that inserts that little nudge of inspiration that sets a mind spinning and thinking, what if? Now, there are two kinds of what if. What if all the bad stuff occurs, or what if there is more and more good? Take our choice about what if we choose. Intuition is most strongly Neptune, and Neptune is, of course, the planet of psychics. You can consult a clairvoyant, and that person can describe to you a version of you doing this or that. It's very seductive because it, if it, because if it was a vision, actual pictures must be real, and sometimes it is. A moment can come in life that duplicates precisely the vision described to you. Sometimes it's a bit wrong or never happens. That's because psychic visions aren't as simple as we might think. Sometimes poetry, like poetry, they're in code. Sometimes a picture isn't a picture, but a message. In The Godfather, when uh, Luca Rossi's vest was delivered to the Corle Corleone, wrapped around a fish, it was a message. Luca sleeps with the fishes. Very poetic and similar to a psychic vision. So a psychic could see you in deep water, floundering, trying to get to shore and being pulled under. But does this mean you should stop swimming? Maybe. But it might also mean you're involved in a difficult emotional situation that makes you feel threatened and you want to avoid it. A good psychic will be able to translate the symbols into relevant meaning, just as the Corleone uh, could translate the message of the fishy vest. Are you a creative person? This author says she is. And she does all sorts of artistic things with great enthusiasm. Recently, a friend was having a baby, and she 
sewed some cute baby blankets. They were supposed to be simple, but she got visions, pictures of several uh, versions, each one a different blanket, and knew a and knew a way of making a picture on the blankets via applique. Saw the picture clearly in mind. Cats leaping, squirrels frolicking, and so on. In one, a picture of a Chinese astrology quilt. The two parents as their Chinese astrology animals, welcoming the new baby as his Chinese astrology animal. And above was the constellation Sagittarius, the baby's own. The vision was very potent, but she didn't want to sew the last one because cutting out all those stars and sewing them would have been such a pain. She tried to say no, but the vision was too strong. It became easier to fulfill the vision and create the baby blanket because only then would the picture leave her mind. This is what spurs creative people on. They see the painting or the sculpture, even if they're actually looking at a plain canvas or a block of marble. And then the vision tickles their brain until it's a vision. But wait a moment. Isn't manifestation more the role of Saturn? Yes, it is. Theoretically, Neptune is involved only in putting out the vision and the artist receives it. That's the way all creativity works, a vision sucked in from the ether. And it feels wonderful, like going to the movies. For the vision doesn't at once feel like your own. It's something planted in your mind by someone else. An adventure, something new that could take you in any direction. There are plenty of creative people for whom this is enough. I confess that on many days I'm more than content to lie on the couch, let my mind wander. It's my favorite thing to do, she says. But for an artist... There's an extra nudge, the desire to harness the vision, make it personal, to realize it, to bring it to life. Part of that desire comes from Saturn, the need to do good work. But some of it still comes from Neptune. And it's the need to stay in the vision, to ride the wave until it takes you all the way to shore. While immersed in the great Neptunian vision, that Neptunian place, you're inside something that is greater than yourself. And it feels wonderful. So that's the part of the desire not to let go, not to disconnect, because it feels too good. Although we look to Jupiter for many of life's lessons on what life should be, Neptune is all about ideals. What would the perfect world be? Where is the true beauty of existence? And how can we feel that within ourselves? Maybe the perfection of heaven that Wallace Stevens decried in the poem, um, everything caught at it, is caught at its most profound. It is just that a Neptunian reality isn't a physical one. So there are no shores with fruit trees. And if she believed in heaven, she wouldn't consider it a mirror world to our own. That's the whole point. When you finish playing Monopoly, you put the board away. You don't keep expecting to go to cross go and collect $200. Neptune in Pisces is in the sign of its ruler, the absolute best for it to function. Pisces, the most diffuse of all the water signs, self seldom needs to define anything. It lets things be whatever they are with no judgments or need to harness them to its own aim. In Pisces is the ultimate receptivity. It is wide open, willing to receive all sorts of stimuli, inspiration, and vague notions that are impossible to define concretely. In Pisces is the ability not only to intuit, but also to empathize. It can feel simply by being in the presence of emotion, even when it's not its own. To witness pain is to feel that pain, and thus born the desire to remove it, to help, to heal, to act kindly. Now this is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer. We will take another pause and be right back. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. 
founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. This is Bonnie. Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and TrueDen Radio. And we're really focusing on Neptune, the planet of illusion, delusion, visions, and so forth. So let's uh, study a bit more about it. Uh, it. Neptune in Pisces is a natural place for it to be. And it's about 144 years before it... Uh, visits Neptune again after it finishes this cycle. And because Pisces sets so few limits, it's a wonderful place for creativity. It's wide open to new ideas. What if? Why not? Pisces is all about feeling and not remotely about defining anything. So it can allow all sensations to wash over and will happily float along. Ballast on a sea of impressions, visions, vague thoughts, and images. Thus, the way Neptune works in Pisces is to send out a vibration for limitless awareness, for sensation that supersedes knowledge, and for a greater willingness to harbor beauty, understanding love, and peace. It helps us see life from the perspective of others and to say, well, I wouldn't like that, so why should you have to endure it. That's one of the reasons that slavery ends during Neptune and Pisces. People says that it's just wrong. We don't think of slavery as a current situation, but across the globe there are enslaved peoples, women used in human trafficking, and so on. And during the current pass of Neptune in Pisces, these atrocities will possibly be eradicated. Religion is another issue that comes to the forefront during this transit of Neptune. Did you watch the Tudors on Showtime? Apart from showing Henry VIII's penchant for romantic troubles, it chronicles the religious dramas of the day. The dawning of the Church of England and the outgrowth of Henry's disgust with the Pope when a requested divorce was denied for him. The Order of Jesuits was established during Neptune and Pisces as well. Bibles were printed or translated. Religion is an interesting topic, although it's more about power than spirituality, which is why it holds little appeal for some people. If you have to go to war over it, how can God be a part of it? Neptune would ask us to just let each other believe as we like, feeling there is room for all. But through history, that's not always the case. The Salem witchcraft trials occurred during that, this transit. 
although we probably won't be indulging in religious wars in this country, wars over belief, nationality, and ethnic origin still occur across the globe, along with mass atrocities. So maybe there's hope for some changes. Water, mist, and chemicals relate to Neptune. And there are many historical events that illustrate how Neptune and Pisces function. Her favorite is sort of funny. A guy crossed Niagara Falls on a tightrope. But there are other more significant manifestations. Dynamite was patented. The first oil well was drilled in Pennsylvania. The first U.S. paper mill was established. Chloroform was first used for childbirth. The first America's Cup was won by the schooner America. Gold was discovered in California. And if that isn't all about chasing a Neptunian dream, we don't know what is. In fact, in a previous life, this author was an old battle axe and went to California to search for gold, where there was none for decades. Something about learning patience, they tell her. In today's paper, there was an article about breakthroughs in the development of synthetic blood, although it sounded a little like the hit vampire drama True Blood on HBO, a point that was made in the opening sentences of the article that could be one manifestation of the current go-round There is so much discussion about legalizing marijuana, and although voters in California keep defeating it, who knows, it could be possible in coming years that better antidotes to drug addiction will be developed, or insecticides. On the news and in papers have been many reports about bed bugs, and frankly, that kind of creeps us out. Maybe something to eradicate them will be developed. Also in the news was a report about the elderly needing whooping cough injections and, of course, flu shots. Um, Childhood inoculations are uh, questionable now also. So there are changes. And currently a debate is going through parents about whether to inoculate their children at all. So... Uh, there is a belief that the increase in autism is a result of childhood shots. So we go on and on, and uh, with Neptune, light is relevant also. The first practical reflecting telescope was among the achievements of Sir Isaac Newton during a Neptune transit. It was his theory that a prism can, prism can com- decompose white light into the many colors that make up the visible spectrum. Newton worked on many laws of science and net nature during Neptune in Pisces. For three centuries, his views dominated. He taught us about gravity and the same sets of natural laws governing the motion of objects on Earth also applies to celestial bodies. Although time is a function of Saturn, defeating time relates to Neptune. And maybe we'll travel through time. Uh, And are you interested in solar energy? Uh, There may be some progress in this field, and there will be ways to use the energy we already have to power things, clean energy that could never harm anyone or anything. Maybe light can be fragmented to release energy the way the atom was split to release tremendous force. That's the thing with Neptune. It grants us the spark of imagination to look at life from a different perspective and then to consider what we intuit as a potential future and work toward that. Water is the globe's most basic substance, And recently, machines have been developed to add an additional molecule of water, oxygen to water, making it a cleaner and stronger than ever bleach. You can drink it, but if you spray a counter with it, all the germs will be gone. Uh, Some interesting innovations. Then there are many historical events that illustrate how Neptune and Pisces functions. A favorite is a sort of... uh, 
well, we we went into that about the uh, other uh, things that were discovered. There may be a way to turn water into energy, which of course has been done with steam, but steam also requires fuel, which isn't that clean. Literature is very interesting during Neptune and Pisces. Moby Dick, a whale of a tail came out, but wasn't that well received. Neptune and Pisces can be very fanciful, and what science called anthropomorphic, uh, seeing human personality characteristics in uh, other creatures or inanimate objects. The beloved Mother Goose Tales was released during a Neptune transit. Tortured stories of love and mystery seemed very Neptune Neptunian, and the Bront uh, sisters with Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre uh, were popular during this transit. Some literature published during Neptune and Pisces crossed the border between fiction and philosophy. There were points to be made. The Scarlet Letter was released then, and amusingly, play on that theme was used in a movie, uh, Easy A, which was created before the transit, but in a way relates to it. Uncle Tom's Cabin, uh, the tale of slavery, became a lightning rod. Thoreau produced Walden and Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. Madame Bovary, a tortured story of meaningless life made more special by a search for illicit pleasures, is a war of gratification versus consequences. Neptune, in other words, versus Saturn, you could say. Neptune is an art. Whether the paint or the painting, and the first avant-garde movement in art, the pre-Raphaelite movement, began during this period. The other day, uh, there were some 3D televisions for sale, and that's very Neptune and Pisces. Um, this author says she likes meatballs flying at me as much as the next gal, but does she really want to sit home in these goofy glasses watching 3D? No, but maybe some people do. Uh, maybe in the coming decade, cool movies will be made that we'll all want to don glasses to enjoy. Music is very strongly Neptunian, and some of the greatest musicians were born during a Neptune transit. Bach, Handel, Scarlatti, and even John Philip Sousa. The great philosophers Aristotle and Voltaire were born, as well as artists Vincent van Gogh and George Surahat. Eternal Youth and author Peter of, of and author of Peter Pan, James Berry, was born then, as well as the satirist Guy de Maupassant. Remember the tale of the borrowed jewels, which, when lost, ruined the life of the borrower, who worked for decades to repay their cost, only to learn they were worthless pace. Witty playwright George Bernard Shaw and the adventuresome Robert Louis Stevenson were born then as well. And so was the infamous Lizzie Borden, who or allegedly gave her parents those wax. The, the author wonders if there will be art geared toward healing with Neptune and Pisces. Maybe music can be written to help a person space out, find a centered place, akin to powerful meditation, and promote healing. Cast your mind free for a moment and see that you can envision occurring as a result of this uh, transit. And maybe more sunken treasures will be discovered in their watery areas. People always say Atlantis will rise and be a continent once more. Maybe. Maybe eye doctors will come up with additional surgeries to heal eyesight. Or maybe they already have. Maybe there will be better lasers to remove tumors more quickly better imaging devices to detect illnesses almost before they start. If we develop better telescopes, maybe we will find other civilizations in distant solar systems. Okay, we will pause again. This is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be back. 
Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. This is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I must apologize for the websites uh, listed prior to the show. Uh, The active website right now is www.crystalcavehi.com. That's my shop here in Honolulu. And uh, some very interesting posts I've put up uh, of things happening and results of the psychic medium uh, sessions we have every Saturday afternoon and sometimes during the week as well. Um, Crystal Cave and Kyanite Lounge with Kyanite spelled K-Y-A-N-I-T-E on Facebook has uh, the postings also and our activities that go on in Crystal Cave. uh, A a bit about our our mediums. We have two and we have about three other young uh, budding mediums. So... um, the two who have been active most, oh well, since they were children, uh, are Grant Ito and Ling Shinoda. Now, uh, Grant is a trans medium, and he is helping to lead these new mediums into uh, channeling. And he describes uh, what he does as he goes into a meditation. And he says he remains in the back of his mind and he becomes a channel. Uh, He started out with a uh, guide channeling through him, a guide called Sarah. And then as Grant uh, did more meditating, and expanding his personal energy, uh, a uh, guide came through that was Brian, a stronger guide. And most recently, uh, we have had uh, uh, an essence of the Christ consciousness come through with messages, uh, with Mary Magdalene, with... uh, Mother Mary, and with some other very strong, Moses, and some other very strong spirits. 
And those spirits have been uh, channeling uh, messages through both uh, Grant and uh, Ling. So Ling is a conscious medium, and uh, she channels from spirit, uh, as well as she brings through uh, loved ones who have passed, who want to give messages and uh, answer questions. Powerful, profound, and fascinating, both of these mediums. They are available by phone or by, uh, yes, uh, telephone is probably best. They can do readings by telephone. Uh, you can see their uh, personal phone numbers on uh, the Facebook page uh, of the calendar for a contact for personal reading. Uh, their uh, readings are $35 for 15 minutes, and that can be extended, and we do take credit cards. So uh, Grant Ito and Ling Shinoda, powerful, life-changing Channel, ha, channels have come through for people, uh, career directions. Um, one very interesting afternoon, a lady came in first time, and she uh, Ling was able to channel a little girl who will be born very soon in within that lady's family. The family will not be able to uh, raise the little girl. I don't know what uh, a characteristic she will have, but this lady is already trained to uh, treat some unusual children. So in less than 15 minutes, this lady realized that she had been seeing visions of this child herself already, and that she was uh, to raise a child, train the child, teach the child, and uh, Ling also saw adoption papers. And uh, so in that short time, that lady's life and that of a child to come has changed. So, and Ling lately uh, has also been able to channel pets uh, she hears their voices just in English. Uh, she says, spirit is spirit. Spirit can communicate through any spiritual being. And so she's been able to realize and assist people who are uh, needing some grief counseling with the loss of their dearly, dearly beloved pets. And in three cases now, those pets have re-come into this uh, incarnation several months after their passing. Uh, it's been fascinating. Uh, that love connection with pet and owner, it can be like a uh, love connection between mother and child, father and child. Very, very interesting to know that they continue. And as such, we know that life continues. So it's very, very interesting. We had another uh, one of our budding uh, channel, new channel people, that is Tiffany. And she was on Maui, and she's been connecting closer and closer to her spirit guides and so forth. Uh, she had a car rented, and she needed to drop off car keys. And uh, she parked on the side of the road and uh, left the motor running. Uh, she remembers putting the car in park. Um, she went, went in, dropped off uh, the keys that she was to leave, came back out, and her car wasn't where she parked it. She looked down, and that car had rolled uh, past eight other parked cars and came to a pause just uh, a 
small distance away from a big fancy Cadillac. So as Tiffany was explaining all of that, she said, oh, I was so thankful that nobody was hurt. Or, or I, I said, Tiffany, do you remember setting that car in park? She said, well, I sure thought I did. And so I said, I intuitively uh, pick up that you did put that car in park. And uh, some of the other psychic mediums there, we started probing. And uh, Tiffany said, when I parked that car, I felt this really isn't a really good place, but I'm only going to be a minute. So uh, it, as it turned out, her spirit guides had moved that car because to prevent an accident with that car and with another car that was coming. So we get help from the other realm in many ways. And that was one of the most remarkable that we had ever heard of. So this is Bonnie Prebula, your mystical and practical astrologer with BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.